Greetings and welcome to Pinball Help. Here I am with doing some surgery on Rudy's face from uh, Funhouse. And um, one of the problems with this game is if you look in the manual, it doesn't really tell you a whole lot about how to work on this. So if you've got this animatronic head and you've got problems with it, you're kind of somewhat on your own if you can't find somebody to help you because the manual doesn't really go into a lot of detail. Let me see if I can find the manual around here. I had it a second ago. And uh, I was looking at... Oh, it's over here. Okay. So basically, this is what you get in the manual trying to figure out how Rudy works. That's it. You just get like an exploded view of Rudy. Uh, there's a little bit of stuff on the assembly, but that's it. There's not really any information about how to disassemble him or anything. It's just like, blam! There's all the parts that make him up. Good luck! So, <laughs> even figuring out how to get the thing out of the game is a pain in the butt. And uh, you do that by disassembling the face on the top side. Um, this is the face that goes over him, right, like that. But you have to unscrew this, the front and the back of the face, with these screws here on the side. You have to do that on the top side of the play field. So you undo one here and you undo um, another one for the, uh, the back, back part of the head. So you have, and then that lifts up off the top. So before you can even service it, you've got to get these things off the top side. Then once you've got those off, there's these uh, screws on the bottom, so you have to lift the playfield up, undo them, unplug a bunch of stuff, and then pull it out of the back. And, and there's a whole other assembly. There's a motor here which drives the mouth that goes up and down, a little motor like that. That's a completely separate thing. Uh, I'm not focusing on that right now, but there's problems with that. There's a little gear that attaches to this that is a common thing that fails and it's broken on mine, I'm going to have to replace that. But before I do that, I was having a problem. Let me tell you what the problem was with this. Well, Rudy just wasn't working right. The mouth wasn't opening, the eyes weren't working, the eyelids weren't working. It was hard trying to figure out, so I had to take it apart and just kind of look at it. Just uh, for lack of a better word, I had, to, I had to eyeball it and see what was wrong with it. Um, so... The nice thing about these pinball games is if you've got even a rudimentary basic knowledge of, of the mechanics of how something should move and go back and forth, you could look at it, kind of tell. So this is a pretty ingenious and pretty complicated assembly here. You've got one, two, three, four coils in this thing that control the eyes and the eyelids. And uh, let's just go over how the whole thing works with the eyes and the eyelids. Um, first off, the eyes are attached to, let's go around and look at the back, they're attached to this pivoting thing right here, and there's two coils, there's a coil on each side, and basically the eyes are centered, and when the coil pulls, it goes one way or the other, like that, see how it goes that way or that way, and that makes the eyes turn left or turn right. Uh, normally they just sit in the middle. I'm going to have to look at this. There's no springs here. I don't know if there's supposed to be springs or it just naturally centers itself. But when when one coil fires, it moves this to one side. And as you'll see over here, move the eyelids up. Eyes go either one way, center, or the other. So, like that. So that way, that way. Center, left, center, right. Not particularly exciting, but that's how it works. Um, so you have your two coils right here, and uh, they, they basically move this thing back and forth. All right. While I'm at it, let's take a look in the manual and see if there's supposed to be a spring there. Okay. So... I think we're looking right about here. There's our two coils and there's a single 
kind of a plunger that goes through both of them. I don't see any spring on it, so I guess that's right. And then there's the little bracket thing with the eyes. Okay. So I think the eyes are set up right. Maybe things could be cleaned out, degunkified a little bit. Now the the eyebrow the eyebrows were definitely something that wasn't working on this game. And the eyebrows are a lot more complicated. Let me see if I can orient this so you can see how this works. So for the eyebrows, there's two coils here. There's one coil right here, and there's another coil back here. And you see there's these two plungers that intersect. One goes out the other side. Um, from what I from looking at it, the way I see that it works is this bottom plunger basically controls the eyelids going up and down and uh, the back plunger kicks kicks in and determines when the eye when the eyelids go up and down whether they go up and down from the mid, from this point or from all the way down closed so this lower plunger this lower coil fires the the eye the eyelid is just going up and down with the eyes open. When this thing is fired back here, I think it allows the eyelids to completely close, so they would go completely down like that. Is the way they're supposed to go completely down like that? Mine don't. You see that? They don't. They don't default to that with this piston in the back. And the reason I think is, you see this spring right here. This spring. Is probably supposed. I think it's turned. It's inverted. It's turned the wrong way. One end is wider than the other, and the narrow end is over here, and the wide end is over here. It should be the other way around. The wide end should be against the coil, and the the tapered end should probably stop right here, so that this is pushing up. So you see, the spring is not installed properly, and that's causing this this thing to not, to not be forced all the way down. So when the rear coil is energized, the default position for the eyelids is completely closed. When the rear coil is not energized, um, this thing hooks right there, and that becomes the home position. So then when, so it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then when this one pulls in, when the rear one pulls back, it's like, Rudy falls asleep. So, I've got to take this assembly apart. I've got to fix this spring. I, but I, there's also another problem. When I pull this thing apart, this thing was actually up here. Whoever put this up here installed it completely wrong. So, I have another problem in that this thing is actually separate from the piston. It doesn't look like it, but this is, this is broken. Right here, this little... The, um, this piece and the plunger are not attached to each other, and I think they're supposed to. See how this one is? This one is not. So I'm going to have to take this whole thing apart and, uh, and fix it. So that's my initial research. Uh, now i got to get online, see where my sources are for these kinds of parts, see if I need to buy a whole new thing here or, or I can get the assembly. And this is really tricky trying to figure out how to get this thing off because you've got attachment here, you got attachment here, you got attachment in the back, you got it. This thing is attached to the eyelid. It's uh it's like one of those brain teaser puzzles trying to figure out how to take it apart. Um so you know, it's gotta be done. So that's where I'm at. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more. Visit uh, the website, pinballhelp.com. Thanks. Once that's out, then the pistons can, both of them can pull, be pulled out. So this is how this is an easier way to service them than having to take the coils off on the on the end. I can I can just pull them out. So with these partially out like this, like that, then I can get this in the right position where I I do like this, and there we go. Now we've got the eyelids on. So 
that's probably the way to do it is this crossbar here and then see if I can work these plungers back into their spots there we go all right now let's put the eyes back oh got to be careful okay nope I lost an eyeball all right this eye's seen better days for sure, but it appears to be working, so I'm going to keep it in here. So we've got like this in here, and then let's try it the other way around. These little swing arms goes in like that, and this goes in like that, okay, and then it goes right in there, take the other guy, carefully, okay, swing this back down, and it goes on between the eye and this lower piston down here I like to say piston even though it's a common term in pinballs plunger this is definitely an intricate assembly here very easy to mess up. But I could see how after a couple of times it, it, it gets easier. Um, I feel that way about there's there's certain parts that other people don't want to mess with. I, um, all right so there we go make sure the eyes are back working okay so now what I'm going to do is put bolt back in here let's see Let me turn it around. Okay. So we've got our eyelids hooked up right there. So now let's put these nylinings linings in here, like that. Or maybe let's put this in first. And then this in like that. Now once they're in, now let's put this in around them. There we go. All right. So there's our eyes in the sleeping position. There's the open position. Okay, let's get the eyeballs set up. All righty. Now put our little bar here, which separates these two. So this will go right there. pretty intricate little setup here. Uh, it always um, amazes me how these mechanical engineers could come up with some of the ways in which they move the parts and pieces around. It's definitely uh, an art form. The, all the little levers and pulleys and swing arms and, and everything. So that's the eyes just kind of going whoa, whoa. and then when this one pulls in boom. He's going to sleep. Huh? Ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when Rudy, so when Rudy goes to sleep, boop, that's the way it's supposed to work. That's what we want. All right. So I'm going to tighten this up. Okay. 
Make sure these eyes move nice and smooth. What you talking about, Willis? Okay. And dun 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 dun. And then go to sleep. All right, that's what we want. Mission accomplished. Well, we'll see when we hook it all up, but. Uh, We're getting there slowly but surely. My dog wants to come inside. So, there you have it. This is a uh, part of working on Rudy. Uh, next, I'm going to be working on the mouth here. I've got a new little gear assembly here that I'm going to put in. And uh, this is going to attach to this guy right here. And then this runs on a little motor that makes the mouth go, go up, up or down, or up or down, like that. So, I'll be putting that together as soon as I get the rest of this assembly done. So there's how you work on the eyes and the eye the eyelids, which are very common. And these uh, these little plastic pieces in here are the ones that kind of tend to uh, break. So replacing them not difficult to do. It's just a little bit tedious, but there you have it. Uh, stay tuned for more and uh, visit the website pinballhelp.com. I hope this was helpful to you. Um, one of the things that motivates me to do these repairs is uh, set, turning the camera on and sharing them. So it, it uh, helps me get these old games working again. And uh, the fact that anybody appreciates it is really good motivation for me to continue. So thanks. Stay tuned for more. Um, visit the website. Let me know what you think. Oh, well, welcome back. Uh, here's a little summary of what I've been doing with uh, Funhouse. Uh, we had a problem with some of the parts of Rudy, so um, I had to behead him from the game. And I'll give you a little summary of uh, how that's done. Uh, on the on the top side of the playfield, there's a there's this front half and then the back half of Rudy right here. Um, before you can remove him, and he's pretty easy to remove once you know the, the secret, there's a screw on each side and there's also a screw for the back part. So you have to get up on the top of the game and, you, and it's not easy to get to. You almost need like an angled screwdriver to, to unscrew those things. And then that comes off. And this that's why this is still down there in the bottom of the machine. You see down here this little hole where Rudy came from right there. And uh, once that, once the head is removed from up top, there are these four screws here that basically keep Rudy attached. So you can undo these screws and then pull him out. And there's some plugs that you have to unplug, and then you're good to go. Then you can take this guy out and you can work on him separately. There's also there's a mouth there's a mouth motor assembly that has to be removed that bolts right over here too. That uh, if take that off and uh, that's what attaches to this little doohickey right here. So let me summarize what what all has had to be, has to be done. Um, there are basically three moving parts here. You have the eyeballs which move left and right. You have the eyelids which go like that or they go to sleep. And then you have the mouth down here, which moves up and down. The eyelids are controlled by a set of two different coils back here. Let me see if I can orient it. See right here. And uh, you have 
this lower one which makes the eyes go up and down from, a, from, from the midway point. And then when the rear coil fires, it makes them go to sleep like that. So these are kind of tricky to get to and um, I figured out the best way to do that so I'll go over it right now. Then you also have the eyeballs. The eyeballs are controlled by two coils here and they, they fire alternating back and forth and these things uh, self-center themselves after it's fired. So one way and then when you let go they just kind of come to the middle. Uh, and then the mouth is run by an electric motor and I'll go into that in a second. Um, these eyelids and the eyes often break. They can be replaced. Eyeballs are about 20 bucks a piece. Not cheap, so they're not fun to replace. There's lots of little tiny parts in here, but it's relatively self-explanatory once you start undoing things. To get to these parts here, to replace these, these ones... Let me see if I can angle this better so there's better light. But to get to these parts here, what you want to do is you want to undo this screw right here. You see there's an L or like a U-shaped bracket right here. Um, you undo this screw and you undo these two screws and you take this little L bracket out and then you um, yeah you could probably leave this bracket on and undo just these two right here, these two screws. And then you either just slide this one out or remove it completely. And then this bracket you kind of slide out. Once you slide it out you can get to these two plungers here to surface them in case one of them is broken. Or in case you need to remove any of these parts here, you can uh, just uh, kind of bend it out. But to separate the eyelids from this plunger here, you really need to pull this thing out and then move this whole assembly forward a little bit and then you can kind of arrange the eyelids. The eyelids are attached to this plunger up top here. And you have to pull the plunger out a little bit and then you have to twist the eyelids a certain way because there's it's like a notched thing when you look at it you can see but the way to getting into it that I found is removing this bracket right here and then you can get to it I originally thought you know if I undid all the coils I could pull things out from the back but it's much easier to do it from the front here so this is uh, the Rudy head assembly I've got it all back together after replacing a couple of the parts and everything seems to be working nicely right now um, now I'm going to work on the mouth because the mouth wasn't working. Basically, nothing was working on this guy, um, and so now I've got. Now I'm slowly putting everything together. Been waiting for the parts to come in. Now they're in. So let's uh, let's move this over to the workbench. Give me a second, and uh, we'll move everything down. Boop, doo -doo 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 -doo. Down the hallway into the lab known as the kitchen, where all my sophisticated pinball repair work is going on. And uh, here we are. And what I've got here is the motor assembly. And let's see. I've got it hooked up to a bench power supply so that I can I can test and I've got uh, variable power supply set up here just got it set to about 4 volts. I think this thing will handle about 12 volts uh, Just and what I'm doing is checking to make sure that the motor's working so I've got my leads to these two alligator clips and uh, what I will do is I'll touch the motor and it makes it move and then when I reverse the other way see now my my little piece here is broken so I'm I'm checking the motor to make sure that the motor works see so it works fine so we know there's no problem. You could use you could probably use a nine volt battery to test this too, or a um, even your little PC power supply can crank out some some five. I think this thing will move probably with with as little as five volts. I think it's running off of the twelve volt line in the game, but check that before you assume. I I fed about 
eight or nine volts to it. Um, I may have even fed ten or twelve to it uh, off the, the variable thing just to check. It just makes it go faster. Um, I would, definitely wouldn't do more than that. So I've tested the my electric motor. I know that works. And this, um, so now what, what I need to do is the way you can see what's broken on mine is the, the, the end here is broken. And the way this thing, this thing kind of just goes from one end, one stop. And it's just supposed to like not move once it hits that. Apparently it doesn't damage the motor, but I guess the motor will find the end during the gameplay and uh, then it knows how to home everything. So, but I'm going to check on that. I wonder if when this thing is initially put together, if it needs to be in a certain spot, you know, whether it needs to be here or here. So, I'm going to take this apart and I'm going to replace this with a new thing. And this is what I was talking about with the, the nubs. You see how the thing's got a little thing right there? This has got a little thing right here. So you line that up, and then it works like that. Of course, you've got to make sure that you've got it oriented right. And uh, I took a bunch of pictures, so uh, when I get ready to put it all back together, I'm going to be re referencing them just to make sure that I've got the, the uh, thing oriented properly. And it's probably something like this. And then this will be, let's see, oh no, this is the underside of the playfield, so it'll prob it's probably oriented somewhere like this, I think, like that. And then this will be connected here. And that's how it'll be on the underside of the playfield, with this going this way, that way, this way, that way. So these things uh, commonly break, because that's one of the one of the focal points of the game and the mouth is always moving so I'm going to get my replacement part put this in and uh, slowly get it back together but there's in a nutshell how you remove the head and uh, you replace the various little components the hardest part is just getting to these things and then once they're in it's pretty easy to uh, to uh, get them get them going so Stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. Visit the website pinballhelp.com. Uh, feel free to leave me comments and let me know what you think. Thanks. Welcome back to Pinball Help. Here we are, working on a fun house, or what's left of one. So here I am working on the assembly for Rudy's jaw, and uh, we've got a broken gear here that we're going to replace. This is a common one that breaks. Here's the replacement one of it. It goes in this motor right here, which attaches to this thing, which drives Rudy's jaw. You can see right here, like that. It goes up and down. So, what I'm doing right now is I'm taking this little assembly apart. There's uh, three screws right here, three bolts, and then this this is screwed onto the underside of the playfield here after it's removed, and you you unplug it, and uh, then we'll take these bolts off, and this reveals the uh, the gears here, and uh, you can see the piece it's broken. And this is the piece that I'm going to be replacing it with, right there. And I guess I shouldn't have done this right near the air intake for the air conditioning system. But just imagine that there's a big waterfall behind me while I'm working. It's just very tranquil. Lots of white noise. So, I'm going to clean all of this up a little bit. Remove this. And uh, there's quite a bit of gunk here on this. But this seems to, to spin pretty, pretty easily. The teeth all seem to be in pretty good condition. Um, there looks like there was a little bit of grease on this thing. I'm not a big fan of necessarily putting grease back here. I'm more inclined to use my old friend uh, silicone lubricant. Spray it with this and then wipe it down and it's like a little protective film but it's not otherwise sticky. But before I do that, 
I will take some alcohol and I will go over the the metal parts with it and clean up clean up a little bit here and there just to make sure that it's it, it's nice and um, smooth. So I'll go over all of that, clean these things up a little bit. We could probably pull this off. Let's see what we got down here. Get that nice and clean. And just make sure everything is uh, nice and smooth. Look at the inside there. There's a little bit of gunk in there. So I'll take a Q-tip. There, or if you don't have a Q-tip, you could take like a little paper towel like this and twist it. Dip it into alcohol a little bit. And just run that through there. Kind of like a gun cleaning patch. And you can do that. Get the gunk out of the inside of it. nylon gear is in pretty good shape. There's no major wear to it. It's a good thing. I didn't see this as a spare part, so I think we're pretty good on that. So we've just got these two things right here. Take a little bit of silicone. Spray. Wipe it down nice. Moves nice and smooth. I like that. I'm going to spray a little bit in here. Like that. And then it's got to be in this way, right? Like that. So this guy goes in here. Let me spray a little bit of silicone on it. So there's our, our new working gear. Put this back. Like that. And you reach for the screws, which you, of course are handy there, so you won't forget where they are. And that's how to replace the little gear that drives Rudy's mouth. Testing it, pulling it out, replacing it, getting rid of that old gunky grease or whatever was in there and putting in some nice dry lubrication so that this thing moves nice and something like that. So there it is. We're almost ready to put this in the game. We take the completed Rudy head here and this is going to go on the underside of the play field right here and then this guy goes I believe like this right here so I will take this and line it up like that. Okay. So you figure when it's here, it turns this way. See his head, his mouth goes closed. I'll only move the thing around so you can see. Okay. Okay. Here's here's how the motor's set up like like that basically. Okay. I'll hold it as if it's bolted onto the underside. So when uh, voltage is applied in one direction, the mouth turns turns this way. When voltage is applied in another direction, let's see, the mouth goes that way. 
So it's like, yeah, 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 like that. And I'm going to bet that when the game is initially powered up, the mouth is closed. So I'm going to keep it in that position when I put it in. But I'm going to double check that. So you might want to check on the website. So basically, when I install it, it'll be like this. And then, then it, the mouth opens, closes, opens, closes. And that's it. So now we're getting ready to put it in the game and uh, see if we've got Rudy talking again. Uh, so there you have it. For more, visit uh, the website pinballhelp.com. Uh, if you're seeing this off of YouTube, if you found it off YouTube, it's probably likely you're missing a lot of the video because uh, there's prob I don't really do any editing. I just put everything, I just shoot, point, shoot, and upload. So um, the complete repair series for these games is usually a playlist, either in YouTube or found on the website. So if you go to pinballhelp.com, you can search by game or you can search by keyword or whatever, and you can find uh, all of this stuff. So there you have it. Uh, stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching.